Student loans are pretty bad. A Martian mortgage is gonna be significantly worse. Anthony here for D News, and it feels like all anyone is talking about lately is colonizing Mars. NASA wants to do it. SpaceX founder Elon Musk wants to do it. I definitely want to do it. Please sign me up to move to Mars. Uh, Musk has already said that he expects a ticket to Mars to cost half a million dollars per person, but that is just the beginning of the expenses. And the costs are very different depending on whether you want to ride with NASA or SpaceX. Jason Major broke them all down over on the D News site, and let's just say either way, you're gonna need some secondary income. First off, a SpaceX shuttle costs $36 billion to send to Mars. A NASA shuttle is gonna cost about $100 billion to make the trip. And even at those rock bottom SpaceX prices, one shuttle launch costs about the same as three billion cruises around the world, which will probably be a lot easier and more pleasant and less likely to end up in an isolated and terrible death for the people involved. Now, that aside, once you get to Mars, you're going to need a place to live. Luckily, every shuttle's lander can turn into a habitat. It's included in the cost of your flight. How frugal. If you're wondering how much of the cost the habitat is responsible for, NASA's inflatable habitat costs about $267 million, while SpaceX's costs about $150 million. Now, both habitats are 120 cubic meters, which Sounds spacious initially, but then if you take a look at the square footage with eight foot ceilings, that makes your home on Mars about 525 square feet. Spacious in New York, pretty small anywhere else. Uh, it also means that if you're living in a SpaceX home, you're paying about $285,000 per square foot, which is also pretty good for New York. Okay, you're on Mars and you get hungry or thirsty. Nobody's gonna blame you for that. You are a human being. Uh, don't worry. You can get a year's supply of food delivered to you for the low, low price of $42 million from NASA or $13 million from SpaceX. Now, bear in mind that when they say a year's supply of food, they assume that you are just consuming a gallon of water and two cans of food a day. I just had a mini panic attack because I realized that there's no coffee on Mars. Those cruises are starting to sound pretty good, huh? Okay, survival is taken care of and now we just need to fight off space madness with a little contact with our fellow man back on Earth. That is not a problem because for the low, low price of $209.71, you can either send an email without images or make a one minute phone call. Uh, if you'd like to watch a YouTube video in 1080p, that will only take about $37,244 in bandwidth. So what is the loophole for the savvy Martian colonist? It's text messaging. Sending a text on Mars costs four cents, which is less than the standard five cents that Earth mobile carriers charge. And I bet even that will not make them lower their prices. So we're looking at overall a total lifetime cost of $121 billion per person for NASA to send somebody to live on Mars, and 48 billion for SpaceX. You can check out the whole breakdown that Jason put together on DNews. It has some other stuff, like the cost of beginning to cultivate your own food and oxygen. It's got sources for all the numbers. It's pretty awesome. And I'll tell you what, I am still into it, man, because what is one more loan gonna do to my credit score at this point? Uh, would you guys go? Oh, and just because I know colonizing Mars is gonna put this in your head. Lacey did a whole video on the logistics of having sex in space. So check that out and subscribe.